So hi and welcome to Big Brainer session. And today I want to speak about content ideas because I know a lot of us are struggling uh, with finding and sometimes even myself, sometimes you find yourself thinking like, what the hell am I going to write about now? What else can I say? What I didn't say? What should I say? And we're feeling maybe so confused and not sure. And then sometimes it can even prevent us from actually creating content because we're not sure what to write about. So if you feel the same, you're more than welcome to write it in the chat if that's how you feel, if you resonate with this. Um, and that's why I felt like that it's great like for today to maybe share with you some some of the type of a structure, a type of a step that you can go through to help you find more content, content ideas. And then through that, like I'll give you more tips. Okay, so how to develop content ideas? So the first step is actually to create a keyword list. So how many of you actually have a list? How many of you have know like what are your keywords? Um, just like nice, Michelle. If there's someone else, you're more than welcome to raise your hand or write in the comments. But it is something that is very good for us, not just from the part of uh, finding content like this. It's also good for, you know, for SEO. So it's really going to help us with that as well. So that's why... The keywords that you're going to choose here, you're going to make sure that you're using it in your content, also on your website, on your newsletter, and in everywhere. This is also going to help you with Google ranking and with by appearing even through either your website or the different social media platform. So, for example, you can start by listing your top 10 keywords topics. Okay. And it's very important to make sure that you're choosing keywords that are related to your niche, to your industry. Okay that in line with your key message, that support your key message. So maybe as a start, you can even write in one sentence, what is your key me message, okay? Write your key message, what is it? Write to yourself maybe like, what's my industry? And then start understanding which keywords can be. You can also use like brainstorming related to this and try to find different phrases and like get a bit deeper. So not just to stop with those keywords, and I will give example after I'll go the step by step on how it can look like. But for example, you chose a certain keywords, then like try to deep, uh, get deeper to this and find what else can go along with this. Maybe different phrases, different questions, something that will help you to get more option. Okay, more possibilities. And for that, you can use different tools such as a Google Word uh, Keyword Planner or even like to do like association or maybe chat with people that are not from your industry. On purpose, I'm saying not from your industry and ask them what comes up to your mind when I say a certain words uh, that are related to your business or part of your message. Okay. Because you don't want to just have like people from your industry. You're going to see now and it, like how you also use that. But also get people that are not from your industry. Okay. Um, this is something I always used to do as well when I used to do marketing corporates. To go to people that are actually from legal team, from finance, from different uh, departments in the company. And see what they got, what they understood. Uh, because not everyone that, for example, let's say I did marketing, but not everyone... Uh, in marketing, things that like that buy the products are coming for marketing. So that's why you want to expand it. So that's the first part. You want to create a list. Then the second part is a competitor research. And the reason why I've done competitor like this is because I don't really believe in the term of competition. I think like we all have our own unique voice and we all bring something different. Uh, so that's why I'm more referred to this as like other people from your industry. So look about what other, others from your industry are writing about. For example, one of the things I like to do is certain people that are from my industry, I subscribe to their newsletter. But by getting their newsletter, now I see what are they writing about, what different keywords they're using, as well as some of them, I follow them on different social media platforms. So this is also going to help you first to make sure that you're staying on top of your game. Okay, which is important because you also keeping yourself showing your audience that you are up to date, you know exactly what's happening. Uh, you are sharing the topics that are trending, important and relevant now to your audience. Okay, and also it's going to help you by finding more keywords that you can actually use because from those keywords, we can get more content ideas because we can get more ideas what to write about, what to create a video about. 
okay? And that way you also can make sure that you are following up on any development, things, trends, things that are, come, are coming up that you can actually incorporate it into your own strategy, okay? So this will really gonna help you to create more relevant content to your brand, to your audience, and to show your audience you're still in top of mind that you're not like coming, let's say, um, there is like leading the market and there's a me too strategy, right? Me too strategy is when you are following everyone else. But even when you do me too strategy, which is an okay thing to do, you want to do it in the beginning of it. You want to catch the train in the beginning, not after everyone's done it and now people are so fed up and they don't want to hear about it anymore. So if you're not leading the market with coming with like topics and I uh, and things like that and trends, at least catch them very quickly. The, the third part of it is now that we are learning the keywords, now it's the part that we also want to make sure that we really know our audience, which is something I always repeat on. Because uh, by knowing your audience, you will know everything you need to, to know, right? Because you're going to know where to find them, how to engage with them, when to engage with them, all of that information. So by knowing your audience, you want to make sure you are considering their interests, their pain points, their challenges, their struggles, their needs, okay? Because eventually when you create content, you don't create content for yourself. You create content for your audience because your audience is the one that you, you want to convert to an actual client. So to do that, you need to speak and reach out to them through what they really want. That of course it's in line with what your key message is about, with what your business is about, with the solution that you've got to offer. Okay, so you wanna also know what type of questions they might be asking that can be related to your keywords. What problems can your content solve for them? You can also, and that is something I always say, I, I, I love doing, um, and I think like you can really use your audience, your existing audience for research. Ask them questions. What would they like to hear and learn more about? Or like on certain topics, what's like in this, like that they're struggling with it? Ask them questions through their comments. And doesn't matter if they're commenting or maybe sending you a private message, you can actually get lots of ideas as well. Your, some of your clients, they may be asking you questions, frequent questions. They're asking you, use those one to create uh, content, okay? Because that's the things that they want to know. That's what they're expecting you to give them stuff that relevant to them, things that they will read. And I said, like, wow, spot on. This is exactly what I needed to hear now. This is exactly what I wanted to know. Uh, and so on. So this is the time to really learn as much as you can about them because they will tell you everything you need to know. So don't be shy to ask or fill what does it mean about me if I'm asking my audience kind of what type of content to write about. There's, it's all about not the what you say, it's the how you say it, okay? So make sure that you phrase it in a certain way that you are activating them and showing them through that, I'm here and I want to listen to you, okay? I care about you and I want to make sure that I give you whatever you need straight to you, making your life easy. Then you can start like by those using those keywords and understanding your audience, start to find trending topics. Now, when I say a trend, it's not just like as people used to think like about trends that uh, because of TikTok that it's like a song or like an audio or like a, a, a certain type of movement. It's more than that, okay? Because a trend can be a topic. You can take it from the news. You can take it, so for example, because Hanika, you do like all this like art and graphic and stuff. So for example, if you can like use the fact uh, that whatever going on in Israel and the people stuck with the kids and make them a freebie of something art that you can use. I'm just giving an example, yes? Like I think that that's what you need to do necessarily. But you're using a situation that's happening now and saying, how can I contribute? What I can actually do and through that to reach out to more people, through that to create more brand awareness, through that start getting, you know, generating more leads even. 
So as I said, it can be from the news, from events, from different topics, from technologies that may be updating and everyone have different uh, trends that can be in their industry. Okay, and that's why it's also very important to make sure we look in what others in our industry are doing. Okay, we want to know what they're also speaking about, what they rec uh, recognize as a trend that maybe we should also maybe use. Or maybe you heard something now quickly uh, somewhere or someone did something and it gave you a day and now you're using it to lead the market. Okay, but it's also very important that before we actually using a trend, we want to make sure that we're tying it to our keywords, we're tying it to our key message. We don't use a trend just because it's trendy. We use a trend because it's the right thing for our brand. It's the right thing for our business. Okay? And that's something very important because sometimes I see people are using different trends. And those trends, I'm like, what are the connection between this trend to what you do? Okay, you want to make sure that you still, because if you want to be a brand that is in top of mind, you need to be consistent, consistent with your design, consistent with the type of content, consistent with your message, consistent with your appearance. Okay, so make sure that when you use a trend, you use the trends that really you can tie it up to your keywords, to your key message, to your brand identity. So here is just like some examples, okay? Uh, like for what I've said now, if you look at the steps. So for example, I can use like healthy eating, meal planning, nutrition tips, uh, fitness and so on. And then I can expand it, okay? To like low carb recipes, uh, calorie counting, uh, uh, strength training. As you can see, like I'm getting deeper and deeper and through that I'm getting more and more ideas. Then if I look at the competitor research, now I'm getting more ideas from their newsletters and their blogs and their social media on which one of those topics are they using. Or maybe they're using different topics that like uh, keywords that I wasn't thinking about, okay? And then through that is the knowing your audience, that's the customer persona. We want to consider what question our audience might going to ask. So we can actually use that and ask, for example, if I look at this example, I can maybe write a post and sharing. Would you like to learn more about calorie counting? Or are you counting your calories? What well, and through that getting like more ideas and more um information and what, what your audience is struggling with and how you can actually contribute with the help of your content. And then of course you can use like uh trendy like topics and check, for example, if there's any new diets, fitness trends in this like specific case and see through that what more keywords you can use what more topics you can speak about and be in top of mind and be on either the leading of the market or between the first ones uh, that are doing the me too strategy so this is like an example on how it can work so it's not something that you need to do all the time but let's say if you do it like like every like few months for example you sit and you do it and then you look because you can get lots of ideas but it's just from this I can even expand it more and more. And you also don't want to have a big list. That's why I said the 10 keywords and to start with that to do the drill down because then it's too much and then you're getting confused and then you're not sure with what to start. And then like, okay, so I won't start. <laughs> okay. Cause like this can push you and this can get you, both can like get you like to procrastinate. So we want to make sure we're not overwhelming ourselves, but we're focusing ourselves and having something to focus on. So you can decide, everyone works differently. So you can decide you do it once a month and through that you plan uh, your content calendar or you can actually uh, say like, I'll do it like every quarter, okay? As for the amount of the ideas, as for the amount of the things you're posting and the amount of like the quantity of like the social media platform you're using because you don't want to put the same content in all platforms. Okay, so for those of you in the WhatsApp group, right, I always said I showed you once the circle and the circle. Like this is, let's say, Facebook, this is Instagram. You want to have parts that like collapse as it's together, but you want to be unique in each and every one of them. That's why this will allow you not to do that copy paste, but actually expand and get more ideas. And also through that, you can do what I call to recycle content, which means 
cooking recipes. And then I'll put a dip inside to like, let's say low carb recipes. So on Facebook, I can write about low carb recipes that helps me after fitness. And uh, TikTok, I can make like a short video, say low carb recipes before you getting married. And you want to lose like the weight to buy a nice wedding dress, you know, so you can take it in different directions. And that's the nice part of it. I want to share a bit more tips around content ideas. So one of the things is that those who know me, you know that I love the numbers. Well, I don't like the numbers. I just learned that I need to like the numbers in marketing. So it's the insight. So do a content audit, okay? Uh, knowing how your previous content performed will help you to decide and learn more about your audience because that will tell you what's, what's working and what's not so much, okay? That will help you with which type of content your audience engage more by commenting, by saving, by sharing, and with which one they didn't. And through that, you can know which type of content you want to find a way to replicate and which type of content wow. so much. So you can divide them to high performing and low performing content. Okay. The high performing content are the one that got you nice results. It not necessarily need to be that it got you 40 saves. It can be even two saves. Okay. Everyone is as per um, their like numbers. Okay, so if most of your content, let's say, is on zero or like one or two, and then you had a few with 12 or whatever, so look at those one as high. So divide it as per what you get your data. Okay, so see the ones that are high performing and see how you can learn from them. What was working, what was not, try to replicate them, use them to inspire you to create more content like this. The low performing one will be an indicator of what not, what's not working, what you don't want to necessarily create content about. Or maybe what you can do, and again, it's also as per your time and everyone with their personality, you can take one of those content and not necessarily on Instagram, let's say something that wasn't working on Instagram, you can take it on Facebook, see if it's working there. If it didn't got your result there, you can maybe use it and ask, can I ask for a feedback? Ask some of your clients. If you've seen this post, can you share with me why, like what wasn't working for you in this and so on? And we also need to remember and have in mind that not everyone that read your content will engage with you directly. Okay, not everyone will save it, share it or comment or, you know, or do something. Some just like to read and watch and at the right time, they'll come to you. That is why I am a big believer in communicating with your audience. Ask them, ask your audience, ask your clients if why it wasn't working. They can tell you, maybe you'll be surprised and you'll discover that maybe he was in the low performing, but apparently they just like, it's not relevant for them now, but it is something that's going to be in top of mind. And maybe it's something that they were not like um, familiar with. That's why they were not engaging. And they actually want to learn more about this. That's why, for example, you can use the stories on Facebook and Instagram and ask, you know, ask them question, what would you like to hear more about and have like four uh, topics and let them choose, get them to be involved because your audience is already involved. If you look at the inside, you can see they are involved. So get them more. If you feel that you are part of that brand and when you see then a content that you actually voted for or you wrote about it a question, then I feel like, oh, someone listened to me. Oh, wow, look at this. And eventually when we create content, we don't create content to just generate leads. We don't need to come in that mindset of like we're creating content to generate leads. We're creating content to build relationship with the audience because by building relationship, we're gaining the trust. By gaining their trust, they're going to be loyal to our brand and our best brand ambassadors. Through that, we will convert them, okay, to an actual lead. And that's the mindset we want to change. That's why we want to create content. That it's not about how many views it's going to get us, how many likes. Likes don't pay the bills. You want to create content that helps us build a relationship that eventually they will come and work with us and buy from us and share it with everyone that they, they think it's relevant to them. Focus on brand awareness because uh, that's what we're doing, right? People want to get to know your, you want people to get to know your brand. You want to build your credibility. 
Okay, you want to have authority in your industry. Okay, you want to set up yourself apart from others in your industry. And that's why you want to highlight your brand. You want to put your brand out there. You want your audience to get to know your uh, like your brand. Okay, uh, you want to know what makes you unique. Okay, what you do that others in your industry are not doing. Okay, and that you can do through content that actually show your audience that you're trustworthy. Because that's what I said a second ago. We want to build trust. To build trust, we need to build relationships. And people buy from people. And you buy from those who you build a strong connection with. Because I remember when I started my business in South Africa, like I had no connections here. All my friends were working in the corporate life. I came from corporate. And it took me a while to build that credibility, to gain that trust. And the way I've done it is by the type of content I kept on creating and being consistent without caring about the likes, about like all that, just putting it out there, letting people get to know. And I created content and I keep on creating content that's like really touching my audience problems, their challenges, their pain points, their struggle. Okay. The things that they are looking for, that their needs. Okay, most, most users are looking for content uh, because they want to find a solution to their problem. Something is nagging them. Something is like, ugh. Or maybe they sometimes even don't know that this is something that they see as a problem. But when it's like, you know, when mobile phones started, no one thought like he needs a mobile phone. Now, as someone like, if they don't have a mobile phone, you look at them like, what the hell? We cannot be without it. Okay, and that's the thing. Sometimes the audience don't know that they need that product or service, but that's our place to speak about it, to speak about like the different problems and all of that and show them and, and like that we understand them, we see them, but also showing them that we have the solution. And one of the important things that uh, I think is very important when you create content, I always compare it that you don't want to share the full solution with them. So it's like when you go to a restaurant, you don't come and get from the restaurant the starter, the main, and the dessert all at once. You start maybe with the bread basket. You maybe then decide to take, you know, the um, some starters, and then you go step by step. That's the same with our content. You don't want to give it all at once. You want to build it up, okay? You want to show them, I see you, I understand you. My brand understands you. Here are some things that you can do, but if you want to know what else you can do, I'm here for you. My product is here for you. My service is here for you. And through that, you're also showing them that the change is possible, it's doable, that they can overcome it. And it doesn't matter what type of business you have, okay? You can do it. It's for all type of business. That's like the thinking behind it, okay? So you want to create content that portrays such confidence that you know exactly what you're talking about because you've been there you've done that that's why i like when people share personal stuff because that's why like i i believe that it's important for me to share because i'm a marketing person i'm doing marketing for 15 years now been doing brands like clinics okay it's like those are part of the brands that i've managed but even for me as a marketing person it wasn't that easy to build my own brand South African are very suspicious. <laughs> you guys don't like, don't give the benefit of the doubt so quickly. It's really suspicious. They give you the benefit of, of the doubt. And if you mess up with them, then everyone else will know. So I worked hard on putting myself out there. I forced myself for two weeks, convinced myself to create a video, but I, and I didn't feel comfortable with it. Today, I do it with my sleep. I don't care that I have a bit of a gray. And that's it. That's me. But it wasn't like from the beginning, okay? So it takes time. So if you can share stories like that with your audience, build that connection, show them they can trust you. Explain about your brand, how your brand started, why you do it. Most of us, our business is not just because we want to have money. For most of small businesses, for most entrepreneurs, it's because it was something that was burning inside. It was something that was important for them. It's something that there's a reason. 
So share that why, why you do what you do. Focus on finding ideas that really relate that set to the problems that you are solving. That's the important part. Through that, you will create brand awareness. Okay, because you really want to show them, you understand them, you see them, and you're there for them. And they're not alone in this. I've overcome it, and you can overcome it. Content frequency, which is also super important. I spoke about consistency. But if you're using uh, content marketing for your brand, the frequency is key because you want to be consistent. You want your audience to see you there. So that's why even for me, that I'm going through this hard time with my with everything, with my family and, and so on, I'm trying the best as I can to at least show some okay, content there. So I want like, and, I, and you know what, I'll share with you an example. Um, after COVID, uh, after not seeing my family for more than a year and some, I went to Israel um, and being with my family. Because of that, I barely had time to work. Then I came back and there was another operation in Gaza and no one really wanted to work and I wasn't in the mood. Those times that I wasn't showing I was barely showing some online presence, damaged my business for two months. It took me two months to pick it up back again. So for my experience, that's why I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying it's very important to be consistent. Even in days or weeks or like when you're on vacation or stuff that you are super busy, not in your mind, show something. Don't fully disappear, okay? Be there for even if like, instead of like the three, four posts you create a week, even one and two. Even if it's just sharing some stories, okay? Try to be there, even for a bit. If you maybe know you're going on vacation, you can plan it ahead. You can schedule them. Like one of the girls that are in Israel that I know from her business, um, she needed actually to jump from her second uh, floor with her kids because terrorists were getting to her house and burning it and running to the neighbor. But... Now you can see posts of her on social media. And someone asked, how can she, you write something like this? And someone actually responded, said, if you know that person, you know that she planned it all up front. So all the posts that are coming up this week are posts that she scheduled last week. Okay? So you can even schedule it like now for the upcoming week that you know you're going to be on vacation and you're not necessarily going to be there. And then you can just enter inside and see some comments and stuff and responding okay so you know what's right for you you know what worked for you but you need to and that's why if you want to also be consistent like that you want to make sure you're considering creating content that you can actually do that you can actually use the content type so for example i don't know if you go to a retreat and you cannot use your phone you cannot rely necessarily on videos because you cannot really do videos in certain places or if you go to a place that so you want to make sure that you're choosing the right content types as well, okay, that you can, that can help you for uh, that's from that side. But also, for example, if for you, it takes time to create a video, you need to work and different angles and like different, like, and the subtitles and so on and so much work and it's time consuming and it's something that you you cannot plan to do like two, three weeks because it's going to be too much for you. So it's also something you need to consider. If it takes you time to sit down and write an article, so don't commit to doing article every few days or once a week. So it's also really to knowing yourself, knowing what's working, what's not. Um, and one of the things that really helps you to maybe do a bit a nice jump is like the trends, okay? Those help you to like be constant there, being there, showing uh, connecting with your audience and you can also as I said like plan you can if you use those keywords you can plan a content calendar it's not for everyone my personality it's not for content calendars some people it's really helpful for them so figure it out what's right for you because you want to have frequency to this you don't want to disappear and that's why as I said about the content tops you want to make sure you're choosing those uh, that will tell your brand story Okay, those that will help you to create a certain flow with your content. Okay, and that's connected with the story. You want to tell the story. You don't, it's like Hansel and Gretel. You, they're walking after the breadcrumbs one by one. 
You want to make sure you're leading them to where you want them to be. Okay, so you want to make sure that, that you're choosing uh, the right types. Okay, and this is the sum of the types that you do. And you want to make sure that you're choosing those that are best for your message. Okay, will package be the best way your uh, message that speaks to your audience. If your audience like to maybe listen more to podcasts versus watching video. Okay, just an example. If you uh, if your audience doesn't have the patience to ring long long posts, you're creating short ones. Okay, and also that suits you. If you don't feel comfortable with video or writing, or like you don't like to maybe hear the sound of your voice, and podcast is not for you, you want to make sure that those three uh, components are in line. So you can use videos, images, live streams, inf uh, infographics stories, uh, podcasts, articles, slash blog. Okay, this is different type of content. So see which one suits for you. So for example, I like my podcast. I like articles to use on my LinkedIn and then on my website. And everyone needs to find what works for them best and what's also relevant to their brand and going to help you to share the story behind your brand. So this is from Dan. I want to share you some content ideas that you can use and you can relate them to the different keywords for example uh, that you're finding so you can create how to guides okay how to do certain things how to achieve certain things okay how to accomplish um you can share success stories but when you share success stories try to make sure that it's not just success stories then some added value in it as well or if you share testimonials do it once in a while and not all the time because it, then it looks like you're just trying to uh, all the time keep on selling. Uh, industry trends, of course, that you can find like on different social media platforms. You can find from people, uh, others from your industry. Behind the scenes, like for some of you, like Michelle, I know you do the deliveries. For example, you can actually share, I'm on the road now, like getting those deliveries behind the scenes. It's actually nice. They can see the commitment in this. Okay. Uh, frequent questions. You can do a series of this. You can actually go live stream and invite them to come and ask and do like a Q&A session. You can also invite them to write what are the questions they've got for you. You can actually collect questions that your audience, your clients are always asking you. And through that, create a type of a series of content. But of course, not to put them day by day. Okay, so let's say today I've done behind the scenes. Tomorrow I'll do a hard to guide. Maybe the next day I'll do a frequent question. Then I'll do a product demonstration. And then I'll do another frequent question. That's how you plan your content. Okay, so product demonstration. If you maybe want to share how to use uh, your, your product, how to use your service. Uh, educational content that can be webinars and live streams, uh, everything you do. So for example, even this, I'm doing this live, that session for you ladies. And then I'm using that on my YouTube and then I can share it on my web and I share it on my website and then I can share it on more social media platforms. And that's the part when I spoke about recycling your content. Okay. You don't always just need to think about, okay, what a new idea I have now in my head. You wrote something. So for example, one of the things I like to do, I can write some bullet points and make a carousel for Instagram. I can send the same bullet points and I can elaborate more and create an article for LinkedIn. I can go on this live on Facebook. I can create an episode this on the podcast and I can create a full session around this. So in each and every one, I was repeating certain points but in each and every one, I gave uh, maybe a bit more information, less information. And this way, if I'm if you're following me on the different social media platform, in each and every one of them, you'll get something else. Yes, some are probably repeating yourself. Yes, of course, we're all human beings. We don't always have the power to create something new. But if you know that in each and every one of those platforms, you'll find things that you won't find in the other one, you want to follow you you know, that brand in different platform and not just in one. And that's how you can also enjoy uh, the followers funnel. Okay. Because you already have an audience, but if they know you and they find you different platforms, say, oh, wait, here they speak about this as well. And they share more information. 
then it makes it interesting. Okay? And that's how you build your credibility. That's how you gain their trust. Um, and of course, for some, if you have products or services, you can uh, create contests, uh, giveaways, which of course you also want to make sure that you're being very careful, you do it legally and so on, uh, and you're sharing that information because you don't want people to have resentments around your brand as well. But this is just some of the ideas. And from each and every one of them, you can take it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And with each and every one of them, if you connect them, to those keywords that if I'll go quickly for that example, like here, I can show behind the scene how I'm planning a meal. I can show like how I'm doing the training. I can give tips by putting carousel and show how the muscles work, but I can also demonstrate myself, okay? Um, there is so much you can do with the nutrition tips. I can speak today on banana, and tomorrow on pineapple, and the next day, and then I can pretty much have content like for ages with all the different fruits and vegetables. And in between those nutrition tips, I'll add like low carb recipes and stuff and so on. So think about how much content I'm creating. Okay? And that's the thing. It's like to think outside the box and to narrow it down and to make it very clear. And that's the nice thing. And really go ask your clients, Ask your audience on the different social media platform. Ask your partners. Ask your friends. What else come up? And people are telling you everything. And everyone, eventually, your audience, they just want you to know that you're there for them, that you hear them, that you support them. Okay? So...